everybody, I'm Kelly Matare and welcome to my channel. First of all, I don't sound like that. Yes, you do. Hi everybody, I'm Kelly Matare. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are doing well. I've got a very special guest today. I have my sister. Hi guys. Hi. How are you? This is my sister Eunice. For all of you who watched our sisterhood video, we filmed a video sometime back with some of my other sisters. And yeah, I'm sure you guys remember from there. We are not twins. I am younger. We are not twins. I am younger. She's indeed younger. But yes, this is my sister Eunice. She's here um, to just share some wisdom on some of the things she's come across in her motherhood journey. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoy. Ready? Okay. Okay. <laughs> So today we are really attacking into the the <laughs> deep corners, the juicy bits about motherhood. If you guys don't know, Eunice's mom to my gorgeous niece Amaya. Amaya, she is three, mm -hmm. right? Turning four years old in June. So she's been in this motherhood game longer than I have. So today she's gonna just share her experiences. What it was like for her to be a young mom and tell you a little bit more about her story. And we're just gonna get to know her a little bit better. So mm -hmm. yeah. We're going to take it away and talk about everything motherhood. Mm -hmm. I'm so excited, guys. I've got so much to share, so much to tell you. So we're going to get, we're going to oh, dig deep. Oh, <laughs> Go grab a drink. Go do something. Something. We're about to get into it today. So first of all, I'm going to let her tell her story. Tell us, Eunice. Mm -hmm. At what age did you become a mom? How did that happen? What was the whole thing around that? And how did you get to be where you are today? Being the beautiful mother that you are today. <laughs> so take it from the top. Like, how did you... Okay, I don't want to say how did you get pregnant because I think we all know how I, I think get we pregnant. all know that. <laughs> but like, how, how, how did it happen? Okay, that sounds horrible, but how did it happen? So I think we all know how we can have babies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think that's a bit obvious. But I, um, I fell pregnant when I was 23, right? I was, I was a young mother and I just finished school. I was very close to finishing school. Thank God, stay in school, kids. So um, I got pregnant when I was 23. So naturally at that age, um, things were a bit difficult for me at that time. Mm -hmm. As most of you know, of any close family and friends, I fell pregnant shortly after I lost our mom. So what is so, that like for you? Like, what is, what is the the timeline? So our mom passed away in September, mm -hmm. and you found out you were pregnant. I think I I found out I was pregnant in oh, September. I think October, November time. So it was literally like a few weeks or a month after we lost our mom. Right. So naturally, at that point in time, I was in a very 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 dark place because I was still trying to mourn. And for me, I know when it comes to grief. Um, I take quite a lot, it takes a long time for it to sink in for me. Mm -hmm. So I was in a very dark time and I remember you were one of the first people that I told. So I missed my period naturally. And so I'm calling Kelly, I'm like, Kelly, I'm missing my period. It's like, take the test, take the test. Oh my girl, what you waiting for? <laughs> like, hello, what are we waiting for? Take the test. <laughs> so for the first few weeks, I was definitely in denial. Yeah. And then Kelly eventually pushed me to then take the test and we found out that we were pregnant and Kelly was ecstatic. Okay, you know what? Listen, she, hear me like, out. Hear me out. <laughs> I love kids, guys. I love kids. And like she was having a baby. And I like for me, I'm just one of those unreasonable people who's like, oh guys, it doesn't <laughs> matter whatever happens, at least as long as I'm having a baby. So I was I was excited. I mean, like, obviously, like, I felt sorry for you because yeah. the, the situation was, was tough. It was really difficult. But for me, I'm just like, oh, babies, such blessings, you know, like, nothing, like, it's all, you'll get more good things than bad. That was yeah. my thought. Yeah. Looking back, that was horrible because you must have been <laughs> terrified. You know, the funny thing is, you actually gave me, you, like, Kelly actually gave me the confidence and the courage to actually say, okay, you know what, I can do this. Because at such a young age, and when you lose both your parents, because our dad passed on before my mom, mm -hmm. so then I was at that point in time I was an orphan. So at that point in time, I still found are. still not okay. I'm still an orphan. <laughs> sorry, that's a dark humor. Dark humor. I'm telling you guys about <laughs> me. Sorry, sorry. Orphans are. <laughs> sorry, 
sorry, sorry, sorry, sorry. Let's get back to it. So, anyways, yeah, I it really did give me the courage to just say that you know I could do this because at that point in time you need like it takes a village to get through that and. At that point in time, I really didn't feel like I was alone because I told my sister. My sister was ecstatic and she's all like, you know, babies are a blessing. Mm. And because it was unexpected, um, I was really scared. You know, I, I was really alone. But then I'm like, okay, no, fine. If my sister can be happy for me, then mm. surely I can do it. Because, you know, naturally when you when you fall pregnant at that age or when you're younger, you have a plan for your life and you set everything, you set your goals and everything. And at that point, you feel like everything is not going to work out the way you want it to. Yeah. Did you feel like, like your life was going to be ruined? Not ruined. Or derailed. But I did know that things were going to take a, long, a lot longer for me to do. And I knew that the vision that I had planned for myself was no longer going to be that. Because naturally, there's going to be this new person. There's going to be my partner. And a lot of other things are going to be involved in that as well. So I kind of had to... I kind of had to shelf my grief because also, you know, I wanted to make sure that I delivered a very healthy baby at that point in time. So I then had to put myself back and I had to take a look back and say, okay, you know what? Stress is not going to help. Depression is not going to help. It's not going to help the situation. Mm -hmm. So I kind of had to shelf my feelings for another time until after, you know, I've safely delivered my baby. So at that point in time, I put my baby first. I loved my bump, Kelly, called um, Amaya. What is, what is her nickname? What is her nickname? Um, I can't even it? remember. I can't even remember. I can tell it, was it was Nuggets. It was Nuggets. So was my room nugget. name was Nuggets. Kelly's really good with, with those kind of names. I don't have one for my own <laughs> for some reason, but other people's bumps, yes, I have plenty of nicknames. So, you know, I, I, I think I really grew to love Nuggets. Mm. who wasn't Amaya at that time but then I really grew to love Nugget but then I, there was also that kind of distance once again because of the whole grief thing mm. so you know I just tried to be as healthy as I could I ate a lot because that is the only time we get a pass to eat a lot yes and that is okay so I did eat a lot and yeah eventually I delivered a beautiful baby girl mm. I was so happy to have a girl like right. that is exactly what I wanted yeah so no shame yeah. she always wanted a girl so yeah. here's my question mm -hmm. Would you say it was healthy what you did, putting your grief back to push becoming a mother forward, if that makes any sense? Like, is that advice you'd recommend to someone who was in your situation? Was it healthy in the long term for mm. you to have made that decision and would you make it again? I think it was healthy for me at that time because mm. I wouldn't want my feelings or my personal... Um, struggles to affect the baby that's growing inside me right. I was perfectly fine with putting the baby first I think that was like the first sign that I was going to be a good mother Because I am a good mother And <laughs> she is a damn good Probably. mother She is So naturally I think I think it was just so natural for me to put the baby before me And that was perfectly fine Eventually I then had my mouth down After <laughs> my <mother. laughs> oh, <in> the biggest <laughs> way <laughs> Like we all do born. I'm yeah. sure like we all do yeah, so afterwards, yeah. then, yeah, no, I think it was, I would recommend that because you need to be happy, you need to live in the moment. Mm. As hard as it is, you really need to live in the moment and you need to appreciate each and every, you know, moment and each week and each mm. trimester that you get past because mm. it's a big thing. Like motherhood, mm. it's pregnancy, huge. it's a huge thing because mm. it's a change to your mind, your body, your soul, every single aspect Everything. is important. So did you enjoy being pregnant? I loved it. <laughs> really? Oh, I loved really? It. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh my I actually God. was being Have pregnant. another one. Just do <laughs> no. it. Just do it. No. Yeah. yeah. No. I did. Okay, what do you miss? Do you ever miss being pregnant? I do. All what do the you time. miss? I, I just, I miss, I miss the growing. I miss the kicks. I miss the little flutters in my tummy. Just, just the small things. I miss eating a lot and having a reason once again because I love food. <laughs> So we have that in common if y'all have a pick yeah, I, that up. I miss the eating. I miss I sort of also miss the attention that you'd get. Mm. Because when people are pregnant, I think also from other mothers, because they understand everything that you're going through. They're like, okay, no, sit down, rest, relax. Mm. So that is also one of the times you like, get to oh, do nothing. Yeah, I just I just need 
to be yes. like, oh no, I'm craving. Oh. And the cravings, even oh, better. Really? What did you used to crave? I used to crave a lot of chicken. Cerevita as well. Yeah, cerevita and chicken. And mm. fortunately, my brother was the one that always went for the chicken and runnings. Really? Yeah, I just time. know that. Ooh, I like, didn't know that. I think Tawo, my brother, my oldest brother, my only brother. My only brother. <laughs> and I'll say that he is also one of the people, I've, I've never told him this, but he is also one of the people that really helped me get over the whole pregnancy thing because you know um naturally because he was the oldest in the family he had to take on a, a lot of responsibility he wasn't the oldest in the family the oldest guy okay only guy <laughs> naturally he had to take a lot of responsibility and he had to mm -hmm. care for me and that was one of the reasons why i was scared but mm -hmm. eventually when i did see him he was so supportive he would actually get all of the chicken in that i need he would support me he'd even feel the bumps and everything I so see. i think so sweet, hey. That's so sweet. I don't know why I was surprised. I'm not some guy, but like it's so sweet. He was such a okay, let me not say was. I hope you're watching this. And to step it up, Sha. No, he was really a sweetie. He was really, really supportive. Hey, like honestly, I owe him everything. Yeah. Anyway, moving on. What so for you, what is the worst part about being pregnant? The worst part was the heartburn. I couldn't sleep. Uh, the gas was embarrassing. The oh, you know what? Sorry, as someone who's pregnant myself right now, let me tell you the gas. So, okay, so we're gonna go into some TMI mm -hmm. about pregnancy. I'm always <laughs> telling talks the gas is so painful because uh -huh. imagine you've got like you've got your 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 intestines, you've got your internal organs, then you have a human being mm -hmm. in there. A gas bubble can feel so painful. It feels almost like a stitch. That's moving down. It's so horrible. It's awful. And it's then awful. if you have a baby like mine that uses my bladder as a trampoline, it's not funny. <laughs> it's not funny. <laughs> I've almost beat myself very, very many times with MJ. I you did, in fact, pee myself in public. Yeah, that's happened. Yeah, that's, that's just happened. one of the normal yeah. things about being pregnant. It's so embarrassing, though. Ah, you it's know, so I used to be embarrassed, but I'm just like, yeah, yeah. Pregnant, yo. What you going to do? So I'm always telling Chums, I'm like, grow your own babies, okay? If you want to complain, grow your own babies. <laughs> So, yeah. Okay, so, if you guys don't know this, Eunice and I have had very different um, birth experiences, completely different. Um, she had a natural birth and I had a C-section. Mm -hmm. So, completely different births. I had an epidural. You did not, like, just, you know, on opposite ends of the spectrum. So, I know for some people it's very hard to give, well, to decide, not to decide as such, but to know what it's like to have both ends. So, we're going to go a little bit into what your birth was like naturally okay. and yeah because obviously i have questions i've never had a natural birth and i'll never have a natural birth so there's <clears> some <throat> things like that i've just always like wondered about mm -hmm. so like that feeling of pushing can we do about oh, is, is it like okay, pooping okay. is it like pooping let, let, let me let me tell you for those who have never given birth naturally or those who haven't fallen pregnant I think naturally as a woman, when you're watching movies and the people say it's time to push, mm -hmm. right? I, I don't know if it's just me. This is TMI, by the way. Yeah, no, but, just here's a huge TMI warning from now on. I it's think gonna be TMI. automatically you feel like you're supposed to push through your vagina, like you're supposed mm -hmm. to like, yeah, like push the baby out through your vagina. You see, almost like pushing but, the tampon. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So when you're pushing, you're actually pushing through your butthole. So you're actually taking a really, really big doo-doo. Yeah. Okay. We'll say doo-doo because other words. <laughs> yeah, so you're pretty much taking a really, really big doo-doo and it is excruciatingly painful. <laughs> it got to the point where, TMI once again, where I was on the hospital bed and I was squatting in, on just above um, a bedpan. Because I thought I was about to go to the toilet. Like, I was holding on to my partner. I'm like, it's coming! It's coming! It's coming! <laughs> so that was very traumatic for me. And serious? it felt like, So you gave birth squatting? I didn't. Hey, I thought it was time, but it actually was not time. I to actually push. gave birth. Yeah. So make sure you listen to your nurses. If they say it's not time to push, do not push. As excruciating as it is, because you will then rip all the way up to your vagina. And then your vagina or to your butthole? No, your butthole will be ripping. What? Okay, no. Oh, no, wait, no. no. Your vagina will rip and then it will go all the way to your butthole. Lots. So if they say Lots. that you shouldn't push, do not push. Because the stitches after that are going to kill you. 
So yeah, it's pretty much taking a very big doo-doo. That is when they say that is the pushing time. And it's for some people, it can last two minutes. For the lady who delivered before me, mm. it lasted two minutes. She was out and I'm like, okay, fine. I can do this. this. Even me, two I got minutes. this and I was pushing for 30 minutes. What? Was it 30? I thought it was 15 minutes. It was, I think it was 30 minutes. And it got to the point where I got too tired and Amaya got too tired. So they had to suck her out. Oh! Guys, yeah, that's so breath control for you too. <laughs> Let us be a lesson. <laughs> so okay, that that that's hectic. So okay, like let's talk during peak pain time, mm -hmm. right? What was going through your mind? Like what mentally <gasps> kept you through? Like were you thinking anything? Do I you still have thoughts at that stage? I remember a lot of the times I kept saying mummy. I kept thinking of mummy oh. a lot of the times because okay, now I'm gonna shut up. Okay, all right, sorry. <laughs> now you're a YouTuber. When you cry on camera, that's how you know it's legit. A lot of the times I thought of mummy and I kept mm. thinking, I can't do this, I can't do this, I can't do this. Because mm. it gets like, it gets really bad. And also the pain gets to a point where like you're starting to feel numb and you can sort of pass out from the pain. That is a real thing. Like I passed out a couple of times. Are maybe. you serious? I did. Okay, but maybe it was like for like two, two or so minutes. I, I don't know. Maybe two or so. It could have been seconds. It could have been, been seconds. Minutes. I don't know. But there's you just get to a point where you just pass out. You can't feel anything. You can't do anything. You can't talk. You can't do anything. You're just there, just taking it. So yeah, I thought of mummy a lot and I just kept thinking, okay, no, I can do this, I can do this, I can do this. Because mentally there's no preparing you for that kind of thing. Yeah, like so absolutely. So yes. like even like if you sit and like watch videos and preparation, it doesn't Dude, I had like <laughs> before I checked into the hospital, I had like my lineup of series. I'm like, okay, no, when I'm <laughs> late. <laughs> uh, where did you think you're going? Dude, and I had like <laughs> my snacks and my cookie. Wow. I can be eating, I can be watching series when I like when I'm going through the pain, that did not happen. What were you thinking? I was sure. I don't even You're remember. You're hopeful. Huh? I was so hopeful. It was hopeful. like classic was expectations versus reality. That's not going to happen. You're going to be in pain. Your partner's going to be by the side and they're not going to know what on earth they can do because they can't do anything. They can't mm -hmm. ease the pain. They can't do anything. They can't help you. They can't at all. And it's really just you and you have to get through it whether you like it or not because it's either that or you're putting yourself or your... <clears throat> yourself or your child um in danger. in danger so you just you just have to get through it ladies you just have to yeah you, you can never be me let me tell you, you can never be me but the thing yeah. is like after you've given birth like it's done like the pain goes down it's, it's still painful oh my gosh the best time after you give birth is that wipe down that you get from the nurses they wipe you down with warm water this is after the stitches because i got stitches after do they like give you anything for the pain for the stitches the pain was so bad from the labor, I didn't feel nothing. Yo, so they stitched you dry. Bro. I think, I, I don't know if they put anything. I just, all I remember is, yeah. Ew. And then I got reason, them wiped that's down. so horrifying. <laughs> that you could hear them. Think, I, oh, no. I was too tired. And no. you really don't feel anything. But that wash down was glorious. Like, mm. I needed it. So how many stitches did you get? I don't know, six. That was like what was like a first degree, second degree. I have no idea. I just, you know, I just know that I got stitches. So yeah, that was yeah, that was the birthing experience. But but like when it's done, like the pain. When it's done, the pain actually does go away almost instantly because you're also really tired and you're most likely gonna pass out shortly after. So I think I took a nap right after like i that was even before i saw amaya i was too tired mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. tino was the one that first saw amaya he took care of her he watched everything happen i was just too tired i'm just like okay baby's out cool yeah fine then i passed out so yeah then, that's hectic i yeah. think that's now like the difference between that and like a c-section because mm -hmm. like a c-section okay so for me i went through labor um and then i got an epidural so with the epidural you can still feel it like mm -hmm. it's you can feel the pressure it's not pain but it's like a lot of discomfort right so and then of course you go through surgery where you don't feel anything i was awake and then after but the pain for two weeks you see that's the difference now like a week to two yeah. weeks after the pain from a c-section where it's like natural birth you're done yeah you're done yeah done. that's hectic you're that's done. hectic but then, you know, one thing that I would do, I definitely, next time, if I have the option, mm -hmm. I'll definitely get an epidural. Mm -hmm. 
definitely because I honestly I'm not gonna get a reward for all of that pain. Yeah, there's no prize. I'm not. Honestly. Like for me, even though I had a C-section, I'm so glad I got an epidural because I was like chilled I was. and like talking to chance and like like everything was yeah. fine until it wasn't. And she looked great after you gave birth, hey? Eh? No, looked, did um, not. she looked she was glowing. I looked like death was on like was like and right around the corner. Me a week later. I was, I was like, oh, I was down. Like when the fatigue <laughs> kicked in, oh I was I was down. But yeah, in it, one day I think I'll, I'll I'll go into my birth story. It's a long story, but anyway, that's we'll talk about that another time. So another thing that was different between us is like you exclusively breastfed, mm-hmm. like exclusively. Like her her child didn't know no formula. I was like, what do you take me for, bro? Like this is now. What is this? Whereas I combination fit. Mm-hmm. So how did how did you find breastfeeding? Breastfeed. Oh my goodness, breastfeeding. <laughs> It was a really cute experience. Cute. It was cute later on, but the first hours. Breastfeeding is painful, hours. people. For me, it was like the first six weeks. Breastfeeding is excruciating. Like that feeling of being engorged. So by engorged, you mean basically, Ooh. it's like you feel tingles from up here. Mm-hmm. And then your boobs fill up with milk and they become rock hard Mm -hmm. it's very very painful so that's what being engorged is but even apart from that the first time i breastfed i was actually i was actually having contractions yeah yeah, because your uterus yeah so i was having contractions uh, for the first times that i was breastfeeding and i kept looking around the nurses i'm like what's happening what's happening and they're just like were were they they like contractions or like was it like period pain it was contractions actually it was painful really like it was actually really really painful for the first week at least it was actually excruciating because i felt like um for me it felt like period pain because i'd start breastfeeding Mm -hmm. and then i start gushing (laughs) it's horrible (laughs) so like so basically okay i'm I'm not a doctor i'm not a scientist or whatever but apparently when you breastfeed it like triggers whatever thing in your uterus to get your uterus to start contracting So in that contracting, remember, you're still bleeding after giving birth. So for me, as it was contracting, like I knew before I breastfeed, I have to like put on a fresh maternity pad and then start breastfeeding because I will stop gushing from the, it was quite gross. But yeah, but you like, the, but generally the experience for you was positive. It actually was. It really was. And mm. I, was I think I would do it again. Mm. The only easy part. Okay. No, it was easy. The only part that I hated about breastfeeding is waking up at night and watching mm-hmm. your partner right next to you mm-hmm. sleeping and you just want to smack him on top of the head and tell him to wake up <laughs> because it's really it gets really lonely at night and mm-hmm. this child does not want to sleep and they want they want to eat and you're exhausted because mm-hmm. you're still recovering from labor you're yeah. still tired from taking care of a child so that is i'd say that is the only part That's the dead stairs in the middle of the night that 14 oh hours getting you, at the you know time. what i hated the most about breastfeeding like having to think about my outfit for oh. every single thing because I, I i breastfed till 11 months combination you when did you stop breastfeeding one year six months yes by the book by the book hey dairy board over here hello hello yeah make six people oh. the voice yeah. <laughs> yeah so but that's a long time hey that's a toddler someone with teeth yeah but then that was also because i was unemployed so i'm like I'm here anyway. Might, might, as, as, well. Well. might as well. Might as well. Hectic. Hectic. Yeah. But at least, I mean, but it's done. So, you know, any future babies, breastfeeding is definitely on the cards. Definitely. Yeah, I would. Because it's also Did cheap. you enjoy it? Enjoy it? Uh, it's a strong word. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Let me just say, I just, I got the job done. Yeah. And, yeah. and it wasn't terrible. Yeah, it wasn't terrible. And I I love cutting down costs. So mm-hmm. the less I spend, the better. It's free. It's coming out naturally. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I would encourage people to breastfeed. But then mm-hmm. if you don't want to, that's all, that's fine too. As long mm-hmm. as you have a healthy baby at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. Do you? Yeah, that's me. I'm like breastfeeding. Hmm. Do you? Yeah, you know, it was terrible. No, it really sucked for me. Like, I hated breastfeeding. Like, I hated, hated, hated breastfeeding. But you never wanted to breastfeed, like, at all. You see, the thing is, for me, I always knew breastfeeding is not for me. I always, always, always knew it. And I tried. Like, for me, I was like, you know what? I'm not, I can't hate something I've never done before. Mm -hmm. Let me try it. I pushed through 11 months. My sanity was holding on by a string. (laughs) But like, so for me, like I was having um, a conversation with Chomps recently to say, even when I put 
um, MJ on some formula. Mm-hmm. I got a lot of backlash for it. Really? Yeah, like from like friends, family, like people I know. But like, yeah, I know a breast is best for the baby. But for me, it's not like I don't know that. You see, that's the difference. I know that, mm-hmm. but it makes me hate my baby. Yeah. You see the difference? Yeah. Like for some people, like breastfeeding is like, oh, it's a good bonding experience. For me, it makes me hate my baby. Like I, 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 I feel I literal hatred. Mm-hmm. for this human being I understand needing that. me so much so mm-hmm. i mean for me it just it, it drove me absolutely mm-hmm. crazy like i i said to the other day that you know what people sometimes force mothers to do things at the detriment of their mental health yeah. but if that mother strangles that child you'll be the first ones to say oh why didn't you say something that is true. why didn't you reach out i remember like peak like i think there was probably a lot of like postpartum anxiety and stuff like that but like peak um, postpartum time i remember just wanting to put a pillow over his face so he stops making noise so he yeah. stops needing me mm-hmm. and it's such a horrible horrible mm-hmm. thought but that is the reality of being postpartum that's yeah. that's the untold truth of motherhood like yeah. sometimes you resent your baby and for me breastfeeding was making it worse because it's like you always need me mm-hmm. <laughs> can't i just be me like you always needing me is making it worse so when i put him like on both like that helps because i could be like okay you know you go over there and the fact that you're not going to die if i'm not there yeah yeah that helped my mental health but Mm -hmm. i think we just need to start being kinder to mothers i think i think definitely and and we need to start being kinder to ourselves as well because you're going through a lot and there's so much going on like i'm saying those dark thoughts that you go through like i remember being so so resentful because like for a man nothing changes Mm -hmm. for the most part right so for me i am carrying the baby i am breastfeeding the baby i'm the one giving birth if anything if that baby goes like yeah it's like where's the mother it's never like where's the father yeah and don't get me wrong i think we are both blessed with very very supportive partners like we will never ever take that for granted and they are amazing, but there's only so much they can do. I can't be like Jones. Okay, here you carry the pregnancy for a bit. You give him the breast. You, <laughs> you breastfeed him. You do it. And the truth is, for the most part, you generally kind of know what's best for your kid. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I yeah. don't know whether you want to call it mother's instinct or whatever. Mm-hmm. Not to say you're born knowing. Mm-hmm. You are also trying to figure it out. But you know, I always say, like as a mother. You're the first and last line of defense. Yeah. So it's like you, if something goes wrong, people give the baby to you. You'll fail. Mm-hmm. You'll hand the baby off. People will try, 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 try. But ultimately, it's going to come back to you. That's true. And you are like the last resort. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I think we just, we just need to be kinder to ourselves as moms. And not be so judgy. Let me tell you, before I had kids, I was so judgmental. Yo, yo, one of those people. <laughs> I was one of those people. <laughs> like there's so many things that I was like, oh no, when I'm, I would never, I will so, never. So at which point, wh- which which examples could you give us where you're like, okay, no, at this point in time, you know, I overstepped my boundaries. I like, what can you give us examples where you actually feel bad and you can apologize to these people which who you wronged? Oh, like um, for like to other mothers. Mm-hmm. I oh, okay. So here's my thing. Even something like co-sleeping, right? Co-sleeping being bed sharing. Um, no, no, not that I used to judge. Not that I used to, look, actually I didn't judge, but I thought it was easy not having a baby in your bed. You know what I mean? I just look at it like, just put oh, baby in the crib. <laughs> just put baby in the crib. Like, I, I, I didn't do it from like a judgy perspective, uh-huh. but like just a, what's so hard about that? Put the baby in the crib. Put the baby in their own bed, right? Mm-hmm. And then I had my own baby and I was like, no Lord. <laughs> Like, st- okay, still, I'm still not a believer in co-sleeping mm-hmm. for personal reasons, though. It's about me because I think in the hospital, I almost smothered MJ <laughs> with my boob. That also happened to Like, me. you have to understand the when baby's head is feeding, like this, it's right? It's like so small. And your boob is like this. And I think I was I was really, really high on, on pethidin. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, I just had my op. They inject you, you're drowsy. I remember like kind of going in and out and then kind of opening my eyes. I'm like, is this baby blue? Oh my gosh, did it get to that extent? But also didn't have my glasses on. Oh shit. And I was also really high. But the thing is like, he wasn't like blue, but you're like, he looks a bit gray. But also I'm high Mm -hmm. with no glasses on. Mm -hmm. So for me, that experience terrified me. It's petrifying. It terrified me. That's why like even 
whenever I breastfeed at night, I would be awake. I could never ever be that person who sleeps when mm -hmm. breastfeeding because I was terrified. Mm -hmm. So when I was breastfeeding, like in the middle of the night, I would read books because I was so terrified. So because of that, I didn't go sleep. But I also know exactly what it's like to have a baby where you put them down in their crib and they start screaming. You're yeah. trying to put this baby down for an hour. You've gotten them down. You put them down in a crib and they start screaming. So like now I know like ish, it's not that simple. It's and it's not. really not that easy. I would like to touch on that um, postpartum depression thing. Mm. For me, I think like shortly after I gave birth for like a good week or two, mm. I... I, I can say I'm ashamed to say that um, I resented Amaya for like quite a long time. You don't have to be ashamed to say and, it. Though. And you know, it's, it's these kind of things that are hard to talk about. But it's the in truth. In general, but it is, it is the truth. I resented her a lot because once again, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I wish my mom was here. Mm. And I was going through the motions. I'm like, okay, fine. Everybody's trying to help me. But then I, the one person, one the person one that person, I need yeah. is not there. And mm. I got to a point where I'm like, I spent um i spent most of the day in bed mm -hmm. and the baby was with tino the baby was with an aunt or, or anybody else and i'm just like okay you know what if you need me just bring the child to feed and take her away mm -hmm. because i just i was just in that really really dark place where i just could not i couldn't fall in love with her at that point in time i knew i birthed her i love her but then i couldn't establish a relationship with her at that point mm -hmm. in time and i found out that you know it's actually okay for you to not mm -hmm. love well, for you to not have a relationship with your child from the get-go, that love at first sight thing doesn't happen to everyone. And that's okay, you know? Yeah. Eventually, you get to establish a relationship. And I think it also happened during the breastfeeding mm. where her and I, eventually we started, you know, having a relationship. Mm -hmm. You know, I could, I could um, understand when she wanted to eat. I could understand when she wanted this. So... Eventually, with time and as and you know, as we got to spend more time together, that's when I then started building a relationship and I then started mm. loving her. Mm. But I felt so bad as a mother. Because the thing is, people make it seem like you give birth and you're like, oh my gosh, my baby, yeah. Yeah, like the baby. That's not the case. And I remember for me, when it happened to me, you're like, it's fine. You don't know this person. Like yeah. it's okay for you to not love them right away. Yeah. But it's again those things that people never say. Like mm -hmm. you feel like a bad mom because you don't. Feel the, feel that instant connection yeah i remember for me after i gave birth i wanted space more than anything like i wanted space mm -hmm. so i think it was like two weeks a week or two actually after i'd given birth because at that point i was trying to express mm -hmm. so i'd express milk and i'll go and walk around the shops because i'm like i just don't want to have somebody attached to me i just i just want to be me so like and i remember i'd spend so much time in tears postpartum has a lot of tears by the way spoiler oh, alert you cry a lot tons. but like i remember like being so upset whenever i'd have to like you know what i'm saying like i i think people love differently yeah and even to this day i'm the person who needs space from my kid mm -hmm. to be able to to, to love, love them, them and most. appreciate yeah them. like i can be the Amen best person that mm -hmm. i can be mm -hmm. if i have adequate space so for example for me like a game changer was when we moved mj like into his own room mm -hmm. and we weren't sharing a room anymore and just being able to like read a book before bed like a normal human being like that space between us mm -hmm. just made me just like love him so much more mm -hmm. and also newborns are very boring they are they don't they smile eat, they, they don't sleep. laugh they poop they cry they feed they poop they cry they feed <laughs> so i remember for me it's only when mj was like okay at like six to eight weeks that's when he smiled at me and i'm like is that gas <laughs> <laughs> and then i remember but like from three months they started like ooh, goo. you know they become a lot more interesting so i yeah. think for me like from that point i kind of started to fall in love with them a bit more mm-hmm so one of the last things we want to talk on is like being a stay-at-home mom versus being uh let me not even say versus because it's not two things against each other it's being a stay-at-home mom and or being a working mom mm -hmm. so that's how we're different again and that you know mm -hmm. i've always been a, a working mom yeah for the most part and you've had a long stint as well as a stay-at-home mom mm -hmm. so i want to hear from you like from your perspective what is that like for you being a stay-at-home mom guys it's it's Woo! it is a job on its own mm -hmm. okay so most people assume that just because you're a stay-at-home mom you're gonna sleep all day you're gonna do anything mm -hmm. you want you can go for yoga and pilates mm -hmm. that is not the case actually mm -hmm. it's actually very difficult because mm -hmm. it is a mental battle 
mm-hmm. and it's a mental hurdle that every single person has to go through or any person who has a, who's a stay-at-home mom mm-hmm. because for me naturally as a person I enjoy working mm-hmm. I love working so I enjoy not being at home and making your money and making my money you know mm-hmm. I've always mm-hmm. wanted to be independent financially mm-hmm. So the fact that I had to stay at home mm-hmm. and take care of this child, it didn't really sit well with me. Because it's either something you have to do. Not, yes, it's not a choice. It's exactly. Just, it's something that you them. have to do. And it mm-hmm. really is difficult mentally because you feel like you're not challenging yourself well enough. Right. And you feel like you have to depend on someone to bring in the money. And for some people like me, it's very, very hard because I want to have my own money. You right, know? right. <laughs> Gotta get your own money. Mm-hmm. So when you now have to take care of this this little bundle that can't speak, you can't talk to. You just it, poop and <laughs> eat. You just poop. It That's actually it. is really lonely because also mm-hmm. everybody that you know is at work, they're making their money, they're well entertained at work, and you're just at home taking care of this person. Not saying that um, some people don't enjoy that. For some people, they love being stay-at-home moms. Right. And that is it's honestly a blessing because mm-hmm. you're at home, you're watching your children grow, you don't miss anything. Mm. And um, for me, that was something that I struggled with because mm. I would like to miss my child. Mm. I appreciate mm. my child more when I don't see them as Like often. anybody, even your spouse, you know? even your siblings. Exactly. Like, I'd like to get time for me. To I'd like miss to miss you. you. I want yeah. to miss you so that yeah. when I see you next, I'm like, I'm excited. okay, hi. Yeah. So when you're around this person all the time who doesn't talk, it, it's actually a very lonely thing. Mm. And... I don't know how other mothers can do it, but some other mothers are killing it. Those yeah. of you who are stay-at-home moms, you're killing it. Yeah. And one of the things that I appreciated the most was we would talk a lot about how I'm feeling like I'm not stimulated mentally. Mm. And you'd always say, you know, you're killing it. And that mm. support alone, mm. it actually got me through. Even my husband, he'll be like, you know, you're doing a great job. He's always been super supportive of me and my experience and being a stay-at-home mom mm. because he knows what it's like we've managed we've reversed roles before mm. so he knows exactly the mental challenges that anybody goes through mm. so anybody that's a stay-at-home mom you do you or girl. dad you're killing or, it or a stay-at-home dad you are killing it you're killing it and you just have to keep doing it and please can you give us tips because <laughs> for some of us yeah. you know we we struggle <laughs> it was a it's struggle not easy. but the thing is like your situation has changed now you're a business owner I'm an entrepreneur, now. you know hey. Uh, my own making money now. Yeah, the tell me, my shingle. <laughs> hey, tell me a little bit more about your business. What has that been like going from being a stay at home mom to running a business? So, naturally, as uh, before I started my business, naturally going through that thing where you're like, okay, fine, what am I going to do? What's going to bring me money? And then eventually, I just decided to settle on something that I believe in mm. and something that isn't too expensive. Because for me, I love bales. Hello. Hello. You like, arrived. You guys see how I love my bale? <laughs> I mean, this chick, this chick, this is together, so, together in that. Like, same WhatsApp crew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I decided to start a thrifting business in my shingle because that's where we were based. Um, so it's called the thrift shop. Mm. And yeah, so pretty much I'm selling um, some dresses, tops, Mm -hmm. and then eventually I'm going to start, you know, expanding my line. Mm -hmm. So by having that, it was, oh my goodness, it was a beautiful change because Mm -hmm. now I can then work towards something that's going to make me money. Mm -hmm. And because I'm working on my own time, if I don't work, then money's not going to come in. Mm -hmm. But then also being an entrepreneur and being a business owner, if I do want to have that personal time with my family and my Mm -hmm. child and watch her grow, Mm -hmm. I can can do that too. So you have options. So I've got options and I I can say that I've managed to find that balance, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. It's really amazing. It's an amazing change and I'm in such a happy place. I'm in such a good place. Naturally, everything has, you know, its challenges. But then, you know, I can say that, you know, things are going good. Yeah. They're going good. Just making money, <laughs> honey. Guys, you see, we can't see women, men. We're just natural entrepreneurs. You see, we're just natural. I don't know if I'm natural. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, make it till you make it. Make it till you make it, man. That's how it's done. But that's amazing. Oh, I'm going to put her Instagram handle here. Check it out. The Thrift Shop Mashingo. She's got an incredible instagram page um she shows a lot of the, the 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 dresses and the tops that she has she updates her social media regularly so don't forget to go and give it a follow a like if you're in my shingle what is the address for the shop it is at sunrise mall so it is mm-hmm. opposite the roman catholic church if you're in my shingle it's not hard to miss trust me so it's a place called sunrise mall 
upstairs room six hi upstairs room six what up what <laughs> so yeah definitely yeah. if you are in russian go pass by for sure show us some love mm-hmm. buy some dresses you're definitely not gonna regret it that's all i have for you today everybody thank you so much for watching thank you to eunice you are welcome being here. thank you guys for letting dying us dig to in. do this video <laughs> no, we have we have thank you so much for being here and letting us dig into your past and just sharing your experiences with us i really appreciate it mm-hmm. don't forget to follow her on instagram i'm gonna put the thrift shop and her personal instagram handles somewhere here somewhere up top but anyway we'll see you guys next time bye bye